What's going on ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Auto Auction Rebuilds and today we are over here at Copart because we are dropping off the uh, Mitsubishi Outlander after uh, buying it sight unseen, which I tell you guys never to do. Unfortunately, I do it all the time myself, but I always know there's a risk involved with losing money and it's kind of fun. It's like gambling for me, you know? Everybody's got their uh, addiction. I would say uh, Copart cars is kind of my addiction. So <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's horrible. But I mean, it's kind of true. I, I'm addicted to buying cars. It's so much fun. I really enjoy it. It's kind of like a mixed bag, man. You never know. It's like a scratch off ticket or something. You just don't know if you're going to win or not or playing the lottery, you know, pick your poison. Uh, this is mine, but I, I just, I never spend more than I can afford to lose. So if it was a complete wash, you know, it is what it is. Um, so the Outlander is going back to Copart today. It's my first time running a car through the auction. Uh, please, God, I know people will be sponsored content. It's not sponsored and no sponsored. It's not sponsored at all. It's my own money that purchased it and it's my own money that is going to get lost if it doesn't uh, if it doesn't make a profit or sell for something reasonable. So we're going to give this a try. I'll tell you guys some of the specifics about what it costs to get it run through the auction as soon as I get back from signing the paperwork inside. All right, boys and girls, the moment you've all been waiting for the big reveal of the $325 purchase. $325 was the winning bid. $525 out the door. How about that, guys? There she is. Now remember, this is a non-runner. This does not run and drive. Can you believe this? $325. 325 five and a quarter out the door look at the tires prime well valera hts look at the tread on these babies look at this i'm telling you it's got high mileage like 230 230,000. look at these tires man good tires all the way around the hail damage is negligible like it, there's a few dings here and there it's got like brand new tires and honestly the hail damage really is nothing compared to the parking lot dings and stuff all over it now yes this is the one somebody took their system out of. So uh, we got a we got a the the window switches and everything are still here and intact. The door panels are in the back. We just got to go uh, find some speakers. Maybe put a uh, we may put an aftermarket radio in it, or we may go back and put the factory radio back in it. I don't know. But this is the one that we came out with. Or I mean, honestly, I don't know when this video is going to come out. I don't know when the video is gonna come. I'm just excited right now. I always get excited about a new car. This is the one, if you saw the video already, then you know. And if you haven't seen the video, well, then you're gonna see it in one of the upcoming Copart walk around videos. Because this is the one that said it didn't run, but we were able to get it running. So I'm gonna hook all these wires back up here and uh, put this back in the dash because it can't be driven like this. And then we're gonna come right back and attempt to start it. All right, so we put the dash back together temporarily. I plugged everything in so we wouldn't have any issues with that. Uh, but what we found, I thought it was just a loose battery uh, terminal. Looks like there must have been a system in here. They've got like this extended uh, bolt here. That's a problem because what they had was this little thing stuck in it and it doesn't tighten enough. So I found this on the ground. It's good to be resourceful when you are uh, working on cars. And uh, you know, you just walk around out the Copart yard out here, out in all this gravel where they load and unload. And I found this bolt. And I, I haven't tried it yet, but I think it's close enough. You see how we got just a tad bit of room here? I think, well, I may have thought wrong. Hold on. This is hard to do one handed here, but I think, no, that's not going to, okay, hold on, hold on. All right. So after going through and looking at all kinds of different bolts and stuff that we found, nuts that we found on the ground, Tim found a washer that we stuck right there. I think that washer is just enough. Hopefully the key's still in it. Yeah, okay, good, good, good. And we got lights on. Look at that. Look at it. Look at it. It runs. 227,800 and some miles. I know you probably can't see it down there. It's kind of dim. But 227,823. Half tank of gas. Oil pressure is good. Battery voltage is good. And if I remember right, this one has cold air conditioning. Let's try it out ac air conditioning is a good thing yes sir i think we're going to go back with the factory stereo because this does have onstar and i want that onstar even though this is probably too old it's probably outdated i doubt onstar even works on this anymore but we'll go to a junkyard pull apart lkq or something we will find 
the factory speakers, factory pigtails, factory pigtail for that speaker. Uh, the door panels are in the back. Look at that, man. Does the sunroof work? Let's find out. It does. Look at that. I'll be cold air, Tim. Cold air. Cold air. This is exciting. Back is locked. I guess now all we gotta do is find. I'm not gonna make you wait like I did the last time, guys. A lot of you got real upset about that. <laughs> I don't blame you. Look at her. She purrs like a kitten, man. I'm going to take these and put them back on the ground. Not because I'm littering, but seriously, I've had to do this before, and maybe somebody will find those and, and they need them. You know what I mean? So we are going to uh, get this thing closed up. We're gonna take it, boy, I can't push the unlock button either. I need to find the, uh, is there an unlock switch back here somewhere? No, I guess not. Dang, I need to get in that hatch and get the door panel out and at least put the, uh, the switch on here so I can lock and unlock everything. Let's close it up, let's see if it drives. All right, so here's something I did not realize when I bought this. This is the extended wheelbase. This is the EXT, that means third row seats. It's got upper and lower rear air conditioning. Look at this. We got the rear air conditioning controls right here. And the AC is ice cold. So this is our first attempt. Um, I managed to get the door locks working by plugging that uh, door lock switch in. But unfortunately, this one isn't doing anything. It looks like there's a wire missing or something. This is going to be something I got to go to pull apart LKQ and just grab a few things. Um... To, to get it right but i i believe since this is a uh since this is an insurance deal this thing probably runs and drives fine so we're going to get it out on the road and we're going to take her for a first drive we're actually taking the caprice back over to the transmission guy he had a couple things he wanted to double check and finish up on but i couldn't wait to do the video on the caprice so <laughs> i went and got it from him um, he just got a couple miscellaneous things he needs to put back on it. So here we go. Are you ready? We're about to find out if I got a good deal or a bad deal. 325 out the door. No, sorry. 325 winning bid, 525 out the door. So far, so good. We're up to speed. I don't know how well you can see the speedometer, but we're at 35 miles an hour. Man, she's cruising. Yeah, it's got all its gears. It's up to operating temperature. It's not doing anything crazy. It's not pulling. Man, this is a steal right here. Oh yeah, we'll head up. We'll head over to LKQ and pull apart in the future. We'll grab uh, probably just grab a couple door panels uh, because those might have some problems. They may have been broken, and we'll definitely grab a factory radio, some factory speakers, and all the pigtails. And we'll solder and 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 wire up everything so that everything functions the way it's supposed to in here. No check engine light either, guys. I mean, I don't know if you can see the dash or not, but there's no check engine lights. There's nothing. And she's running like a top. These are some of the deals you can get out there at Copart, man. 325 win and bid, 525 out the door for an 05 uh, Trailblazer. EXT, third row seating, rear heat and air. Man, what a deal. What a deal. I know the miles are high. It's got almost 230,000 miles on it. So, I mean, I understand the miles are high and that's going to definitely take away from the resale value. But realistically, guys, there's no reason this truck put back together won't bring $2,500 all day long. No reason at all. Looks like a win in my book. Let's get it back to the house and uh, we'll go over the running and driving condition. I got several miles to go. Uh, I got a few errands to run, so we're going to take care of that. And then we'll come back and we'll talk about how it did. So the truck made it back, or SUV. Some of you get upset when I call it a truck, but uh, it made it back and the check engine light did come on. So I guess what we got to do now is this is a perfect opportunity for me to break out a product sent to me by Alltel. This is the Maxi Diag MD806 slash MD806 Pro. 
and I have not used this one before. Obviously, I've got my real nice uh, MaxiSys Elite, but uh, this is definitely a lot more portable. And we'll go over a couple features on the back just real quick here. Let's see, uh, support. It supports reading and erasing codes, uh, data functions for engine transmission, ABS and airbag systems, support for read erase codes, live data functions for full systems, uh, support oil level, uh, oil service reset, uh, service mileage and service interval reset, support parking brake, pad relearn after replacement. That's a good one for some of those European cars, right? Uh, does steering angle uh, sensor resets, uh, diesel particulate filter, uh, including forced regeneration, support for battery registration and reset. Didn't know that. Uh, global OBD2 coverage for the U.S. And uh, this one is not a, uh, this is not a subscription-based service. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here we've got your little device right here. you got your little connector right here going in. We'll plug into our OBD2 port. Let's turn the thing on. Let's find out why we have a check engine light. All right, this is not touch screen, so it's kind of old school. You gotta hit the buttons. It's actually very simple to use. Let's find out why this check engine light's on. And hopefully it's not anything, uh, not anything too crazy. All right, so the good news is it only shows one code found. So let's read codes. We'll do stored codes. Oh, fan speed sensor circuit. I'm not entirely sure what the fan speed sensor circuit is, but that's one we're going to have to look up. It's a P0526. So let's check that out. But before we do that, let's just go through the diagnostic menu real quick. Excuse the beeps. Look, live data, freeze frame, uh, O2 test, onboard monitor tests, component testing, and then, of course, vehicle info uh, should give you your VIN number and stuff. Modules present, DTC lookup, system status, and read codes, erase codes. We're starting back over again. You get out of this. Oops, get out of this, hit yes. And we've got scan. You've got your services, uh, service history, stuff like that for resetting your oil and stuff. Uh, there you go, your steering angle reset, parking brake, DPF, battery. I can't believe that's a thing. Uh, even your throttle. Uh, when you install a new throttle body, you gotta do a relearn procedure on that. Adjust air fuel. Whoa, we're gonna stay out of that one. Uh, <laughs> you got updates. You got to update by USB, it looks like. It's not Wi-Fi, so you got to plug this into the computer, and it does come with the USB cable. All right, pretty cool. Let's go check out that, uh, that code and find out exactly what it is. So as it turns out, that is the electric fan clutch. It's really no big deal. It's not expensive. It's not difficult to replace. The truck doesn't overheat. It seems to do just fine. It's something maybe we'll fix or maybe not. I don't know. We'll see as time goes on and uh, as we progress through purchasing parts from the junkyard. You know, maybe that's something we could pick up out of the salvage yard or something. Uh, we'll see. It just depends on how much everything's going to cost to put it back together because I really believe this on, or sorry, not Envoy, this uh, Trailblazer, I think this is going to be a great flip. You know, for 500, basically $500 out the door, we got an extended wheelbase trailblazer, third row seats. It looks really good. I mean, it really does. High miles, yes, but this should be an easy 2,500, maybe even upwards of $3,000 so we do have some room to work with here. Uh, as far as driving and everything, it ran and drove fine. I uh, used it for a few errands yesterday to get some things done and brought it back to the house. It does run and drive absolutely fine. I found no issues with it thus far aside from uh, just needing a little bit of TLC. And I think it's gonna make somebody a great vehicle. And that is always a good feeling to be able to purchase something cheap, especially when it's listed as a non-runner but it actually runs and drives just fine. You're not gonna find too many deals like that anywhere else, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, big shout out to Copart for allowing me to do those walk around videos. Um, if you haven't seen this uh, Trailblazer in the walk around videos yet, you'll see it. It's in one of the videos this week. I don't remember which one, but we figured out then that it ran. It was just a loose battery terminal. And here we go. Now we own it. Nobody bid on it. Nobody really wanted it because it didn't run. At least so they thought. Some of the good deals that you can have out there at Copart, not sponsored content. Please, not sponsored at all. I get asked that question all the time. These are deals I legitimately go out there and find myself. This is why I tell you guys on the regular, you need to go to your Copart lot and look at these cars yourself. 
uh, definitely better than going out there sight unseen. Some of these cars run and drive. You just got to, you know, you got to know what to look for and you got to know what to do. You can find yourself a deal like this at your local Copart Yard. I'd almost guarantee it. I can't guarantee it because that could put me in some kind of a legal issue. But I'd almost guarantee if you take the time to go out and look at these cars, you can find yourself a good deal out there. So I'm going to get out of here, folks. But I hope you have a great day, whatever day it is now. I don't know. But stay safe out there, everybody. And I'll catch you all very soon in the next one.